So one thing I forgot to mention in this last video is the uh, allosteric inhibition is not overcome by increasing the dose of the agonist. So in the case of the agonist, when we talked about how if we had 600 molecules of the agonist and only six molecules of this competitor inhibitor, just because of the probability of the 600 of these guys interacting with this receptor site, compared to six of the competitive inhibitor, the agonist would win out most of the time. Well, in the case of this allosteric activator and this allosteric inhibitor, especially this allosteric inhibitor, if this allosteric inhibitor is on this, this site right here, increasing the dose of the agonist, another, you know, maybe, you know, add two zeros to that, so we got 60,000 of these agonists, it's still not going to overcome this al allosteric inhibitor because this allosteric inhibitor is bound to a different site and is causing a change in this receptor here. So the allosteric inhibition is not overcome by increasing the dose of the agonist. So a few more things we need to talk about is the EC50, the LD50, therapeutic index, and margin of safety. So what is this EC50? It's called the half maximal effective concentration, or EC50. It's What it means is the concentration of a drug, or an antibody, or a toxin, which induces a response halfway between the baseline and the maximum level after a speci specified exposure of time. So on, you know, if we have a chart here and then we have uh, kind of the dose response and then time, you know, if, if let's say this a certain drug has a capacity of kind of coming up like this, well EC50 is just halfway between the baseline and the maximum after X amount of time. That's what EC50 means. So LD50 means that the there's a median lethal dose, which is the dose of a toxin, radiation, or pathogen required to kill half of the members of a tested population after a specifi uh, specified test period. So if I have time here, and total members, like if I have, you know, let's say a thousand people, and you know, over time this this drug does this, so it will kill, you know, let's say, you know, in in you know, right here, this is like four four days, it will kill a thousand people, because all drugs are toxic, because they're not they're not you know you weren't born with all the all these drugs inside your system so they are toxic they're foreign to the body and the body is going to uh, try to rid them and there is a certain level of toxicity to all drugs so median lethal dose is right here so when half of the population gets killed uh, or you know enters in to into toxicity however that is defined the halfway point so that's LD50 so therapeutic index, which is also known as therapeutic ratio, is a comparison of both of these. It's a comparison of the amount of therapeutic agent that causes a therapeutic offense to the amount that causes death or toxicity in human studies. So therapeutic ratio is LD50 over ED50. That's what therapeutic index is. And then margin of safety is, uh, is kind of a big one. It's the amount between a therapeutic dose and a lethal dose of a drug. So if the margin of safety is low, then you have to monitor the drug's level inside the, the patient very closely. But if you have a margin of safety that is very high, you can be a little bit less specific about the dosage that is required to produce the therapeutic range. So margin of safety is, is kind of a big deal, and we'll talk about that in later videos. So first of all, the RI is an inactive or non-functional form of a receptor, and the RA is the activated form of the receptor. So right here, we have a receptor that's inactive. So if we add a drug, this is a drug, to the inactive receptor, 
it might not produce a response. And then the drug can also be uh, switched over to a, a receptor that's active and then that can lead to an effect. And then we can also have a drug that is on an active receptor that also leads to an effect. So here we have, a, let's just start here. So this is constitutive activity. And this is kind of a, a key point here. So thermodynamic considerations indicate that even in the absence of an agonist, so if you don't have an agonist on a receptor, this still happens. Some of the receptor pool must exist in an active form um, some of the time and may produce the same physiological sec effect as an agonist induced activity. This is called basal level. So this is called right here basal level. So if I have let's say if I have a receptor here this is kind of like chemical equilibrium is that if I have a receptor that's active and a same receptor that's inactive, let's say it's got a line through it, that means it's inactive, these are going to be, there's an equilibrium associated with the active form and the inactive form. These molecules, the, the chemistry inside is going to be switching back and forth, switching back and forth. So there is going to be some equilibrium to this reactor, this receptor. And so this receptor is going to have constitutive activity or this basal level. So it's already going to be up on this on this on this uh, response chart. It, you know, maybe maybe 10%, maybe 5% of response because this receptor is going to be active just because of the thermodynamic properties of chemicals. So that's that's important to keep in mind. So there's always going to be some kind of signal into the cell saying, I need you to do this, I need you to do that, just because of thermodynamics. And so that's called the basal level. Let's go to this one. So there is neutral antagonism. And what that means is that, say that for a reactive, a receptor that's active, there's a drug that is attached to that. Okay. And then let's say, you know, let's say this is 50% of the receptors on a cell. Let's say a cell has, you know, a thousand or whatever. 50% of those, there's a drug on the receptor. And then on the uh, receptor that's inhibitory to this signal, or the inactive non-functional form of the receptor, there's, an, uh, there's another drug on it and let's say it's on 50% of those. So the cell is getting 50% on signal and then it's getting 50% 50 50% 50 off signal. So what does that mean? It just means it cancels out. So it's neutral antagonism. So there is no level of response when this scenario happens. And then let's go up here and talk about this. So the recept the receptor is in its active form the drug is active it's a full agonist there so there's full agonist and partial agonist that means that you're going to get the most response from the drug and then there's partial agonist where this drug for some reason is not as a strong binding to this receptor or to the same receptor so you get just a partial agonist so that's kind of interesting where uh, you know, just because of the chemistry and biochemical properties, this drug right here does not produce uh, as big of an effect as another drug on the same receptor due to the biochemical properties. So that's called a full agonist here and then a partial agonist here. And then you have an, an inverse agonist, and that's if you have a receptor that's in its inactive form and then you have a drug that's in its inactive form. Then you actually bring that down, uh, let's say all of these receptors that were, you know, because of this thermodynamic equilibrium, the drug binds to all these and turns all the receptors off, well then you have an in inverse agonist. 
There's another concept that's called intrinsic efficacy. So pindolol, a beta adrenoceptor partial agonist. It, it, may e it may act either as an agonist, if no full agonist is present, or as an antagonist, if a full agonist such as epinephrine is present. So let me explain this. So if you have a receptor here, and let's say that this molecule here, pindolol, is you know this this molecule here it will act as an agonist if no other agonist so this is an agonist agonist and then let's say change colors here you have uh, epinephrine epi so if you have if you don't have epi here let's say you don't have epi here this molecule will act as an agonist a partial agonist so it won't turn on the full maximum potential of a signal it will just maybe give 20 30 40 50 percent of that effect so it will produce an effect actually I'll just put it down here it will produce an effect maybe you know 20 to 80 percent effect that w that's what happens. But let's say that epinephrine does come into role. Let's say your body secretes some epinephrine. Epinephrine. So this epinephrine will come in and it will act as a competitor. This agonist will act then as a competitive inhibitor. So then it will act as an antagonist because it's competing with the same site as epinephrine. Or what this. Uh, Pindolol might do is it might bind to kind of the side of this receptor and then act as a more full antagonist and kind of change this uh, this receptor site so epinephrine cannot bind as well. So either way this uh, once was an agonist is now turns into an antagonist when another molecule that has a higher affinity for this receptor comes along. So uh, that's kind of interesting too when you think about drugs. They'll, they'll act as an agonist or an, an antagonist compared to other molecules or hormones that's in the system. So that's also got to play into role when we talk about uh, specific drugs for specific receptors. And that concept is called low intrinsic efficacy. All right, we'll see you in the next video.